Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. This is Dan and today I bring to you three super cool patterns that you can use in your blues playing. So we're going to be playing back over the C blues backing track and you can use these licks in any normal 12 bar blues, especially with a straight beat. So let's get down to action. Now what I really love about these particular patterns is that they have such a great rhythmic quality that you can apply to them. For example, if you were to play an improvised live blues solo, you can really turn people's heads with these licks because although they're not necessarily difficult to play, they have this great rhythmic quality that can really connect with people. And I know from my own experience that uh, when I hear people play something that just fits in so well, has a great rhythm in the right spot, it just sounds fantastic and has that wow factor that you just can't get enough of. So firstly ensure that you're playing over a dominant blues chord progression as opposed to a minor chord progression to make these phrases work. The first phrase we're going to play sounds like this. Now we'll play it once slowly. Now I often introduce solos with this or sometimes I use this as a start of a turnaround. So it basically mixes some of that minor and major blues if you know what I mean with the first note or the first couple of notes I should say. So we're going to bar our first finger over the G, the B and the high E on the 8th fret. We'll start off by hammering on from the 8th to the 9th on the G as a downstroke. And then with the downstroke again on the B, we'll hammer for the 8th to the 10th. The reason why I don't use an upstroke is because sometimes I can get this sound. We don't really want. We want no no bleed. So we'll do those four notes first. Then play a high E on the 8th fret. And then I will play the B again, the downstroke, hammer from the 8th to the 11th and then the high E on the 8 again. I don't mind a bit of note bleed between some of the notes, it's just certain ones I don't want note bleed in, so don't worry too much about the note bleed. Sometimes it can actually sound pretty cool, because it can outline the chords a little bit better when you actually have a little bit of note bleed, believe it or not. So yeah, we play it four times, it sounds like this, as again. I actually introduce a little bit of palm muting to that, so have a little bit of an experiment. And keep in mind that we're playing this as 16th note, so if we have a 1, 2, 3, 4, it's going to sound like a da 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 So that's kind of the way I would think about it. So the second pattern that I want to talk about, I actually used in two different ways in the intro. The first one was this. And the second way was this. Now what I like about this particular pattern is that you have that kind of a I was talking about um, those rhythms earlier and this particular lick is great for setting that kind of rhythm there. I really love it. As I said, it's not too difficult to play. The second version is a little bit more difficult and we'll get into why when we go through it. So here's the first pattern once again before we go through it. So that's it played once, let's play it a little slower. So we have that and that's the rhythm that we're really going for here. So what I do, I keep my second finger kind of clamped down here on the 10th fret of the B string. Okay. And then we're using, actually my first finger is pretty much always clamped down as well on the 8th fret of the high E. Okay. And it's basically just my third finger that moves, but I use my 
palm here to palm mute on the uh, B string so that when I play the B string notes it's kind of muted so whenever I play it it should kind of stop it although sometimes you might not want it to be so muted it doesn't really matter whether it's muted or not it's really just however you want to play it and whatever you want it to sound like and you could play it like this or it's up to you so yeah I keep those fingers kind of pinned down and then firstly we are going to play the 11th fret on the high E with the third finger and then pull off to the um, eighth fret up stroke and then I play a down stroke on the 10th fret of the B, okay? And then I do the same thing, but now I move my third finger to the 10th fret of the high E and pull off again to the 8th fret. And then play the 10th fret of the B. So we have. Okay, and then we do that twice, okay? And then the final part of it is, okay, which is basically 11th fret on the high E, pull off to the 8th, and then 10th fret, pull off to the 8th, okay? Pretty easy, right? And that's the whole lick. That really is the whole lick, and it's super easy, but you can get that nice rhythm. It's just like did it did it did it did it did it did it did it. It's just really kind of cool, and that's kind of why I love it for the rhythm mostly. Okay, so now we're gonna play that type of lick, but with a bit of a variation in a different position. It's gonna sound like this. So we're gonna start off by barring our first finger over the G and the B. On the 8th fret, we are going to put our little finger on the 11th fret. We're going to pull off, starting from an upstroke on the 11th fret, to the 8th fret, okay? On the B string. And then we'll play the 8th fret on the G. We'll do the same thing again, but we're going to start on the 10th fret on the B instead. So now we have this. Now let's imagine we play that twice. We have... But that last note there, we're going to exchange the very last note for from A to A, which is an 11th fret on the G, okay? It sounds a bit weird, but that's just the flat 5 blues note. When we play it within the context of the whole lick, it should sound pretty quirky and cool. So instead of sounding like this, we're going to have, okay? And this came from an accident. But I thought it sounded cool, so that I started to use it. So sometimes the best things that we play can start from an accident, believe it or not. So we have this. Okay, so our little finger is now on the 11th fret of the G. We're going to try to roll it back over to the B string on the 11th fret, and then pull off from the 11th to the 8th, and then the 10th fret, play that, and then pull off to the 8th. So we, we're going to end it like this. Okay, let's play that again, a little bit clearer. So we have this. So we have that. It's still going to have that rhythm. And that's kind of what we're after here. Okay. We kind of want that rhythm to be going. We really want that to be going all the way through. It's just a, such a cool sounding rhythm. It happens in a lot of like pop music actually, that rhythm. But um, having it within a, a little lick like this is kind of cool. So we are finally going to look at this pattern and it sounds like this. So that simply was me playing the pattern in two different uh, positions, but on its own, in in one position played once, it sounds like this. Okay, if we were to repeat that, it would sound like this.
and if we were to move it a string below it would sound like this okay we, I obviously I sped that up a little bit there but that's kind of what I would like to hear other people do you know any of these patterns you can speed up slow down you can play them whatever speed that you like so if we were to mix those two different positions together we would be using a mixture of the Dorian and blue scale so we'll get this sort of scale okay so let's just play the whole thing once what we are doing here we're starting off on the high E on the 11th fret we're gonna play a downstroke and then play an upstroke on the 10th fret so I use my third and then second finger then I pull off to the 8th fret okay play that again a little bit clearer then I use the 11th fret of the B downstroke and then an upstroke on the high E on the 10th fret again pull off to the um, to the 8th fret okay and then finally the last two notes is 11th fret on the B downstroke and then upstroke on the high E on the 8th fret okay so you can take that fingering and move the whole thing a string below and it would sound like this okay So imagine if we were in, say, E minor, we might have something like this. That sort of thing, you know? So that's just an example of me playing the same type of thing with different fingering but in a different key. As long as you're using this three notes per string scales, then you should be fine. So if you've enjoyed the video and you, you know, took something from the video, give us a like and subscribe if you've not already subscribed and you want to see more videos just like this. One thing I want you to take away from this video is if you make mistakes, sometimes those mistakes can actually be good things. They can make your future licks sound more interesting. So don't ignore the mistakes. If the mistake is there and it sounds interesting, take note of it see what it was and then try to incorporate it in the future if you thought it sounded interesting anyway i'll see you in another video don't forget the back and tracks of this will be available on patreon so i'll see you soon and goodbye